Open the Enterprise Manager.exe from your shared location by double clicking on it. Although there are other executable files in the folder, this will be the only one you should normally run directly. It searches for the most recent build installed and launches it. If for some reason you need to open an older build, you can execute that exe directly. If you do not have the SQL Server client installed on your machine, you will be prompted to install it. Once it is installed, you will be presented with this screen, which is the connection settings screen. You will need to provide these settings on each client one time only. This drop-down controls the connection method. It will need to match the options you selected when installing SQL Server. Only mixed mode and integrated are typically used. Mixed mode may also be referred to as SQL Server authentication in SQL Server itself, while integrated is sometimes referred to as Windows Security. Mixed mode is the most flexible, because with integrated security, you will need to manually create a user in the database server for each Windows user you expect to connect. Supply the server name here, and if you're using the express or free edition of SQL Server, you will need to append backslash SQL Express to the end. Note that that is a backslash and not a forward one. If you have a more sophisticated setup of SQL Server and are using a named instance, you will need to supply that here as well. The name of the database created by the setup script by default is Enterprise Manager. You can copy that database to use for test or learning environments, in which case you would specify the name of the copy here. The default username and password if you are using mixed mode is EM and EM. This information will be filled in by default on the first connect. This screen is the login screen, which allows an enterprise manager user to log in. This screen is shown whenever the program is open unless a user logs in and chooses to save the credentials, in which case it will automatically log in using that user. The only user that exists in a default installation is the system account with no password. Let's choose to save our credentials so we don't need to enter them each time. Most times when a new update is installed, upon first login you will see this screen. Only users with appropriate security credentials, which we will cover later, can execute the database update. So keep in mind that after installing an update, a high security user will need to immediately log in. Because this installation of Enterprise Manager has not had authorization codes entered, the only module made available is the settings module. Let's enter those codes now. We will copy paste our company authorization name and each of the three codes in. Once all authorization codes have been provided, the modules available will automatically refresh. Now we will go through and fill out some important settings. Most settings are supplied with working defaults and the only settings that you will be required to fill out right away are those found in the company settings. We will use the group filter to limit what we're looking at to those settings. If you hold your mouse over or select any setting, you can see that details about that setting are shown in the setting description area at the bottom. Many settings will also pop up this information. Some settings hold things that are purely preferences and are set for each user as they use the system. So this checkbox hides or shows those items. You may also click the print button with Microsoft Excel to print out a list of each setting, its type, the description, and its current value. Settings required for each module will be shown and discussed in the video for that module. The Capabilities setting is a read-only setting 
which shows what capabilities your authorization codes have provided. This is the end of Basic Enterprise Manager installation and setup.